well, where should we begin when we talk about women artists? I guess at the beginning with prehistoric art. Now, to be perfectly frank, most books on women artists do not start with prehistoric art. Some start with the Middle Ages. Uh, many of them actually wait and start in the 16th century or at least in the Renaissance. But I thought we ought to go back to the beginning. We always talk about cavemen, <laughs> people from the Paleolithic period. Hey, there probably were some cave women too. Uh, were any of them artists? How would we know? They left no written records. And here's a little cartoon. And as you can see, uh, we have a group of tourists going through one of the caves with the cave art. And presumably the guard, uh, I'm pretty sure this is probably supposed to be Lasso, but at any rate, he's pointing out the art and he's uh, evidently has just said that it was created by a caveman. And so here is the woman making waves, looking very belligerent. You know, we're supposed to laugh at her. And uh, she says, it's never occurred to you, I suppose, that they could have been created by a cave woman. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? Because, you know, we're supposed to laugh that the idea that it could have been. Actually, it's a very valid question. Don't know how we'll answer it, except some new evidence was discovered. Obviously, we don't know the names of these artists. We don't know the conditions under which the art was created. We don't even know why. Uh, the art was created. There are theories, there are ideas. Some of them are based on Paleolithic cultures that survived to the 20th century. And so anthropologists ask them questions. Some are based on assumptions. After all, we want to know, but who are the artists? Well, were they only males? Isn't that assumption just because, well, of course, only men can create? Well, maybe not. These were some cave paintings that were discovered fairly recently. They were only discovered in 1994. They are in France, Chauveau Point d'Arc, and I put the website up here so you can read about that. They're around 34 to 32,000 years old. And as you can see, uh, just as many other cave paintings, you have all of these wonderful pictures of animals overlapping. We also have something else that's interesting. There are a whole series of dots of course, these could be you know, the spots on the animal or just decorative. But the dots were made by fingerprints. They pretty much know how these would be created. If you were the painter, you would, of course, have tried to find some minerals that have colors in them and probably grind them to a powder, or maybe they were a powder, uh, and you stick your fingers in them. And then you put your fingers right up on the wall of the cave, you know, sort of finger painting, essentially. Dot, 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 dot. Well, the neat thing about that is that they can literally figure out the hand size. And you can see this little overlay where someone has gone through and put handprints in. These are not on the cave. This is someone who's trying to show where the handprints were. And because of the different sizes of the hands, they think that they can identify some of the handprints as male artists and some as female artists. Now that doesn't say exactly who painted this bison or who painted this mammoth, but it does give an indication that women may have been involved in the process of creating cave art. Certainly women were subject matter of prehistoric, of Paleolithic art. And what we're looking at here, a lot of times the genitalia are emphasized, uh, presumably, because fertility was a big concern. Uh, you would have uh, short lifespans, high mortality, to continue the family group or the, the tribal group. In fact, to continue Homo sapiens, you have to have fertility. And there might even be the assumption of you know, fertility for animals in some cases. Of course, here we're showing human figures. Uh, one of the interesting things about cave art is a lot of times the outcropping of the rock suggests evidently to the artist what should be painted there. And uh, so here we have, it looks like, I, I guess if we paint this today, somebody would be complaining about it, but uh, it's essentially uh, the pubic area of a uh, female figure on this triangular shape of the rock. We know there also are a number of these female figures. They used to call them Venuses, uh, and then someone decided that wasn't very good because Venus was, of course, a classical goddess. So now they'll just call them, this, is not, this used to be the Venus of Villendorf, now it's the woman of Villendorf. Villendorf is where they found the little statuette. And uh, it's not a statue to you know, put on a pedestal. There is a uh, little hole. So we think that probably um, some kind of 
you know, rawhide or other cord was put through it and it may have been a, something someone wore. There are a number of these pregnant women figures. Uh, the ones that survive are mostly in stone. Probably there were some in different media, some of which have not, many of which probably have not survived. And here this is from the side. Uh, once again, certainly it's women as a subject, but you know, what does it mean? Uh, is it a fertility amulet? Is the person supposed to wear it uh, in order to become pregnant or uh, to protect the child if she is pregnant? Is it a representation of a mother goddess? Somebody, people have suggested that. And of course, we have no idea whether it was carved by a male or a female, but it is woman as subject matter.